Welcome back everybody. Backyard Country Living. Jeff here. The heat has returned. I thought fall might be on the way, um, but we're back up in the upper 80s, almost 90 degrees. Uh, filming this on Labor Day weekend, so I hope everybody has a safe and uh, happy Labor Day weekend. I hope you're off on Monday, get that extra day. Uh, anyway, today we've got the Massey hooked up to a disc harrow, a tandem disc harrow, uh, a Massey Ferguson model, uh, MF21. This is an old school disc. Um, I believe it was produced sometime back in the 60s. I actually have a manual I'll, I'll, I'll show in the video here. Uh, my dad originally bought a Massey Ferguson tractor new in 64. I'm not sure if he got this disc at the time he bought the tractor. He may have or there shortly after if, if not at that time. So I'm thinking it's mid 60s uh, model. So really great disc, very heavy duty, um, you know, gave us many years of service. We released a few parts on it here and there over the years. You can still get parts for it, but it's a real good disc. Uh, we're gonna be doing some disking around in the garden where things have kind of grew up since we, you know, threw with the garden. Another spot we've got, uh, so show you a little, little of it in action. Uh, anyway, we'll take a closer look at it and, and show you the details of it here. All right, getting a little closer in, uh, taking, taking a close up look at this disc. Um, Check this out, found it on eBay. That's not the original manual that came with it, but I was able to find that on eBay a couple years back. MF21 Tandem Disc Hero, and check that out. What can you get for a quarter nowadays? Um, so anyway, and the date on this manual, um, yeah, it looked like it was in 1966. So there again, I'm not certain of the date of this disc, but I'm thinking somewhere in the mid 60s. Anyway, um, they sold this particular disc in three different sizes, six foot, seven foot, and seven and a half. This is a seven and a half foot. Um, I added the little small blades on the very end that you can see there, uh, welded some rods on there and, and, and you know, with a threaded nut on the end to add the small disc, just so when you're disking, it doesn't leave such a deep rut, you know, on that outer disc. Uh, it kind of makes it, you know, a little more smooth there. So I did add that. Uh, I think these are 20 inch blades on this disc. I think it, you can use 18 or 20. Um, but anyway, talking about the configuration of the disc. But, um, and I'm not sure, and if anybody knows this, maybe they can leave in the comments. If they even still make anything that can be configured like this. Uh, this, this disc can be set up in three different configurations. Uh, per the manual here, and, 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 I, and I honestly, I didn't even realize that till I got the manual, you know, use this disc all my life, and I, and I saw the different bolt, bolts and slots that you can move things around, but I didn't really realize that you could do this until I got this manual, and it explained in detail. So how it's set up right now, and, and how I pretty much have used it all the years I've used it, is as a rigid disc harrow. You know, tandem disc, you got the front row, and let's see, there's what, one, two, three, or five discs per section here. Uh, six on the back when you add the, the small one that I've added in. Uh, actually, no, seven on the back when you add the small one in. It's set up as a rigid disc. Right here in the middle, you can see you've got some, some bolts and, and uh, pins here that can be added or removed. They're currently they're in, so basically with that, the whole disc is one unit. It's kind of rigid. Uh, so that it doesn't really flex the, the front, you know, kind of tracks and rides with the back section. So that is set up, as you can see in the manual here, as a rigid disc harrow. And uh, in, in most cases, that's where you're going to leave it. But, next section here, it can be made into a flexible disc harrow. So just by removing these two pins here on the back, just a little key here, pull it out, pull the pin out, then you can see that allows this back section to float. Uh, and then, you know, it becomes a flexible disc. Um, you know, per the manual, you would use that and more if you've got hilly terrain, uh, you know, stuff that you're gonna be running over that, you know, the disc needs to be able to ride over it and, and go in the contours. So just by pulling that, you know, that makes that happen. And then the third configuration, actually shows in the book here, is a bush and bog harrow. It's got a good picture of it down here. So with that pin pulled and you put something under the back of it and then sit it down and, and actually um, you raise the back off of the ground and then reinsert the pin. So now you're actually just, just running with the front disc only, the back section sitting up off the ground. 
uh, and it says you know you can use that where there's a lot of brush or it's damp soil boggy um, I guess that just gives you the single row of blades versus you know the dual so it's a pretty neat neat setup that you can configure it in in those three configurations uh, and then of course you've got about five adjustments here for your angle on the blades I think if you put it all the way forward that gives you about a 12 degree angle all the way to the rear is 24 degree you know and that makes it be more or less aggressive cutting into the soil um, it's it's about midway there right now so you know somewhere around 18 degrees is what we're doing right now uh, we did uh, put some new front blades on it a few years back uh, Spencer actually gave, gave me those for Christmas one year I had been wanting to replace the blade so what we did um, the blades that you see on the rear now were on the front so we rotated those to the back put the newer you want your newer better uh, blades that are going to cut more on the front um, you know do, due to the fact that they're reaching the soil first and hasn't been broken up yet and your you know, blades are or maybe a little worn can go on the back uh, so anyway you can like I said you can still get all the parts that has sealed bearings I did replace one bearing I don't know it's been seven or eight years ago you can still buy those parts from agri supply you know locally around these parts Category one, of course, three-point hitch. Um, now, on the rear, the board that you see here with this metal, that is something I added. So, um, number one, it gives a little extra weight. Uh, this disc comes in, the seven and a half foot model, about 905 pounds as it sits. Uh, I'm guessing I've probably got, time you add this metal, the board, the extra disc I put on the end here, you probably got another 75, maybe even 100 pounds. So I'm guessing it's, it's close really close to a thousand pounds so it's a pretty heavy disc but what I like to do you know if you're disking stuff and it's pretty rough you know you leave it like it is if you're trying to get the finished product and get maybe your garden your final run to get the soil as smooth as possible so you can make your rows or whatever then you just simply fold this guy down like this I've got some stops here that he hits these metal braces so it doesn't you know go too far under and now that drags behind the disc uh, give you a nice smooth finish um, you know get your land as, as smooth as possible to make your roads um, so anyway it works pretty well I just did a little weld in there added some metal and then when you're not using that you just fold it up get it out of your way so anyway that's not the original paint job it did originally have a Massey Ferguson sticker right here but that came off over the years so it has been repainted um, but anyway, it's a pretty, so for its size, a small disc, it is very aggressive, cuts very well, as you'll see coming up here. We got some stuff that's grown up, probably almost knee high in the garden now, but you'll see. I may have to make two passes, but we're going to tear it up. So uh, we'll relocate and show you what it's all about.
drop the uh, backboard and just so you can show you kind of that gives you a finished product. pretty good job you can see like I said before this dirt is a lot uh, you know moister than what we were doing in the garden it was just a dust bowl uh, down in the woods there's a creek not too far from here like I said back in the day back in the old days before greenhouses and everything you had a you had a spot near the woods or in the woods because you know all the the compost from the trees and everything, you know, with the decay, makes a great bed uh, to plant your tobacco uh, beds. That's what we did here in the day. But now we, uh, you know, obviously don't use it for that anymore. Actually, Spencer's wife Emily is now. Um, we're planting. Her, she's into flowers, so we uh, decided to make this a spot for her to plant flowers and stuff. Um, and she um, makes bouquets and sells them and everything. So uh, anyway, but you see, it does a pretty good job. Um, uh, the, the Massey has no problem pulling. I have not tried this behind the Coyote. There again, um, you know, I'm sure it would pull it. Probably have to be in four wheel drive, but you got the tires on the Coyote that are really not designed for that. So the ag tires, even though this is two wheel drive, it has no problem whatsoever. Uh, you know, if you get into some thick, heavy stuff, yeah, you, you might have to lighten on the disc a little bit, but, um, but it pull, pulls it pretty well. One other thing you may have noticed, uh, the difference in the spot in the woods versus the garden spot. Uh, I did mow, uh, mow over this with the rotary cutter a week or so ago. So, uh, and that does make it better if you're gonna disc it. You know, the garden, that grass and stuff was up knee high or better. Uh, makes it a little more difficult to get it turned into ground and everything, uh, where if you mow it beforehand, if it's tall stuff, it does make it easier and better for those disc blades to get down and you know, get to the dirt and turn that stuff under. Anyway, hope you um, enjoyed that video. Um, we're uh, maybe getting getting on into something else here soon. And uh, like I said before, hopefully we start doing more videos more frequently. Uh, anyway, hope everybody has a safe weekend and uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks.